Hey you. Um, okay, so here's the plan. Um, I'm on my summer holidays at the moment, officially, um, as of this week. And um, I've set myself a task, which you may feel is an impossible task. Um, and it, it may well be an impossible task. Let me wind back a moment and, um, and say where this, this all began. So uh, last month I listened to an audiobook called um, Why We Dream by Alice Robb. Um, and I listened to it on audio like every day while I was cleaning for that week. And it it really left an impression on me in terms of the unexplored realm of our dreams. And uh, as someone that um, is always trying to approach writing in a different way, a way that keeps me um, excited and keeps me um, involved, um, like full body mind involvement, um, I started to think about lucid dreaming and the possibility that uh, if I could master lucid dreaming I could maybe write while asleep in my dreams um, some poetry. Um, so lucid dreaming uh, for those of you that might not know exactly what it is is basically um, becoming conscious in your dreams and um, this is kind of, you know, it's a, it's a thing, it's a real thing, um, and it's been sort of scientifically proved, it does exist, you can do it. And they worked out that um, your eye movements um, during dreams actually occur in your body, in real life. In, you know, so uh, if you are dreaming, say, of watching like a tennis match, your eyes will often just go like this, following the ball. So they um, they came up with an experiment where they would pre-plan out a kind of uh, movement of eyes, you know, like one left, two rights, one up, whatever, and uh, and perform it in a dream. And they did manage to do this, and it's been done several times to prove that, yes, the person was conscious whilst sleeping, whilst in their dreams, and able to perform uh, memorized eye movement. <laughs> um, I'm going beyond the eye movements to actually writing my next pamphlet of poetry, hopefully entirely in my sleep, so I don't really have to think about it too much in my conscious life. Um, to help me along with this, um, other than the audiobook, um, Why We Dream, I have uh, Exploring the World of Lucid Dreaming by uh, Stephen LeBurge, PhD. He is the he's the top dog when it comes to lucid dreaming, and Howard Rheingold. Um, and so yeah, I'm I'm reading this at the moment. Um, as far as I've got in this book so far, it's pre preparatory stuff. So it's um, how to relax your body before sleep, um, dream signs, things like that, which I'll be going into uh, um, through hopefully this vlog. Um, so we'll, we'll go through this together. Um, and then I also have um, this gorgeous book, Creative Dreaming. And this is by Patricia Garfield, also PhD, A Revolutionary Approach to Increased Self-Awareness. Um, and this book I haven't um, started yet, but I'm going to be flicking through it. So this is, you know, how to uh, plan your dreams, how to become conscious during your dreams, how to develop dream control. Um, you know, by all accounts, uh, lucid dreaming is a, an absolute pleasurable, joyful, euphoric experience, you know, that is, that's going to be a fun, you know, what did you do last summer? A lucid dream. So, uh, so I've got these two, two books to help me along. I've also started a proper, properly, because I've started on and off many years, um, I've got a proper dream journal now. So I've started with this, recording some of the dreams I've had thus far, um, and yeah, as I mentioned before, dream signs, um, the, the, the trick is with, with the keeping a journal of dreams is not only do you sort of get to see recurring themes and things like that, but you get to see um, recurring kind of motifs that if you become conscious of them from hopefully recording them and reading your dream journal, you can pick up on them while you're asleep. So, for example, 
uh, I've noticed one of my dream signs is shopping centres. So I often dream. Um, I grew up in Milton Keynes, guys. So Milton Keynes, you know, is is renowned for its shopping centre. I spent many, many a day, uh, an hour of my uh, youth in a shopping centre. So uh, I often dream about shopping centres. So the the trick with that is that hopefully at some point I'll be dreaming of a shopping centre and I'll catch myself thinking, wait a minute, I often dream of co- of shopping centres. Am I dreaming? And then once I've caught it, that's it. I'm in there. This isn't this all this stuff. It's, it's not necessarily what it what it looks like. Then um, I, I just love the idea of maybe tapping into one other level. You know. Welcome. Let's dream. So. Uh, Patricia says that I um, should maybe do Savasana, pre-sleep Savasana. Is Savasana the one where you do the going around your body, relaxing yourself? No, Savasana is just lying down, really. Just lying down. Yeah. Right. On your, but I guess yeah. intentionally so, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe rotation of consciousness would be like. Yeah. Yeah. She suggests I should have a like a, a a dream mantra, like a phrase, with my intention, which I can repeat to myself all day long, and like preferably like uh, over over before well before I go to sleep. Mm. Um, so I like she's saying, tonight I fly in my dream. Tonight I fly. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, your dream state mind will accept ideas that are repeated more readily. Than unrepeated ones. Because so I visualise the dream. So you're going to say, tonight I write say, in my dream. Tonight I write I write poems in my dream. Yeah. Yeah. And I can visualise myself doing that. Sean's got me a, a new t-shirt today. It's Camp Arrowway. Arrowack. Arrowack, sorry. <laughs> Camp Arawak. And where's that camp, Bertie? It's from Sleepaway Camp, which I yeah. actually didn't realise, but then. Yeah. No lucid dreams last night. Um, I did have... I had, I had a, quite a few dreams, and I'm getting better at remembering my dreams. Um, I dreamt that a friend of mine... I dreamt that it was the last day of school, and uh, but I was, like, you know, my age now, and uh, I dreamt that a friend of mine had, uh, like, a science project, which was, like, a small, uh, like, see-through, like, clear... Uh, box and inside the box there was lots of uh, insects like beetles and flies and snails um, it reminded me of the Damien Hirst uh, A Thousand Years box but like a miniature version of that and I went to write something on uh, like a note on it to uh, say congratulations or something about the project and uh, um, I accidentally like tipped the box over or 
broke the box um, and I was trying to put it back together again but then the box was like a cardboard box and it like, and I was trying to sellotape it and you know like when you try and build like a cardboard box and it's quite fiddly and I was trying to sellotape it back together again and um, all the flies and everything were escaping and there was just like bugs everywhere um, yeah that was that dream um, in a way quite glad I didn't lucid dream myself into that one because because I made it a bit of a uh, it was a bit clumsy I was a bit clumsy in that dream I would say but before um, my neck hurts as well I don't know if you can see how I'm moving I wrote it down in my journal by the way it's actually the second dream I've had I wouldn't have remembered this about my journal it's the second dream I've had this month um, about the last day of school so um, and you've just finished the last day of school oh that's true yeah, yeah in a sense yeah yeah that's true um, but before going to sleep last night I, I was reading um, this collection New and Selected Poems by Dorian Lux um, and it's my first venture into uh, Dorian Lux and this is sent to me by my friend Elwine who was a big fan um, and this is so good yeah, I'm trying to read exclusively uh, poetry or poetry related stuff at the moment as part of this project. Um, but yeah, highly recommend Dorian Lux if uh, if, if that's a, a new one to you. It was to me. But these are profound and uh, really sort of easily sort of accessible and easy to read, but they're, they're brilliant. Um, so yeah. Uh, yes. I'll check in later. I'm going to have some breakfast. Uh, this very special state of lucid dreaming can give you a power. It's sort of like a state. cybernetic feedback system it's or something. kind of like. You become aware of the fact that you're dreaming, conscious of the fact that you're unconscious. Or... Exactly so. It, uh -huh. it seems like a paradox. And at first, yeah. people didn't believe that this was possible. We can learn from this. We can actively use our dreams. And that's what I call creative dreaming. That is setting up a, a relationship. Then I found a copy of uh, Dark Deep by Ali Condi and Brendan Reichs. This is a middle of like a mysterious island. There's like this place they're not supposed to go to, but they go because I think one of the- How's your lucid dreaming going? I have yet to uh, achieve my goal of lucid dreaming, um, but have no fear guys because as Stephen LeBurge writes don't be discouraged if you don't succeed right away and don't give up I think that in my dream last night which I don't remember uh, there was a moment uh, in which I I asked myself am I dreaming and then I just kind of carried on with, <laughs> with my dream um, but I think the fact that I asked myself that or I think I did ask myself that um, is a really positive step towards maybe one day ask, asking the question and answering it in my dream and being like, I am dreaming. Uh, which leads me on to um, the next passage in the book that I'm on to now, which is um, critical state testing, building a bridge between the two worlds. Um, and that basically involves reality testing. So reality testing is like quite an exciting uh, venture because it involves basically me asking myself regularly through the day, am I dreaming? Good morning. Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? Am I dreaming? Or am I going down the stairs? Is this a dream? What's in the fridge? Am I dreaming or do we have two no cluck chicken Kievs? Once I get into a habit of asking myself every now and again, am I dreaming? Um, because like our dreams often reflect stuff that we do regularly in our day, my dreams then are in my dreams then I'll start asking myself, am I dreaming? And, and that might be a little sort of trigger into lucid dreaming, into sort of being aware that I am dreaming. Um, so it's reality testing. I, I, in the um, Why We Sleep book by Alice Robb, she sort of said something about having a bracelet, wearing a bracelet, which said, am I dreaming? So you could just constantly be looking at it 
and then you might in your dream then look at it as well and that might sort of just spark that little moment of uh, consciousness so i might make myself fashion myself a little bracelet but um am i dreaming guys comments down below let me know if you think i'm dreaming or not dreaming we've got a big day ahead haven't we shani yeah, yeah it's a big day we're gonna go um out to our to a chapter arts which is our sort of local little uh cinema cafe uh art exhibition center um and we're gonna go and have uh, a vegan burger possibly the moving mountains burger which is next level don't want to get our hopes up it might not be there um and then what we're gonna watch shiny is sparks film <laughs> we're gonna watch the new sparks documentary um because we we love sparks sean um uh, is a huge sparks fan would you say that they're your favorite group yeah yeah <laughs> um and then it's friday so it's um chocolate and slasher night in, <laughs> In the pastori household, so Lyle Pastori Villa. Isn't it? Yeah, so every Friday night we watch a slasher and um, we're allowed to eat chocolate. <laughs> Obviously anyone's allowed to eat chocolate at any time. Yeah, any time when we are allowed to eat chocolate. Anytime, yeah, but we, sort but of we save it for Friday. For Friday. <laughs> been a bit lax with my uh, vlogging over the weekend. Um, it's mainly because um, I've achieved uh, nothing in terms of my lucid dreaming poetry writing project. Um, I'm, I'm still trying like uh, and like those moments when you wake up in the middle of the night sort of briefly you know just like maybe after a dream when you wake up. I'm sort of continuing to do my little mantras and sort of think about what I want to dream about and you know doing my lucid dream techniques but I mean Jeanne last night dreamt that she had a, a rat in a bum bag um I'm not even getting that kind of thing I dreamt I was in some music festival and there was a cooler shaker were playing so she's having the good dreams and I'm just uh just struggling by really so um, anyway, still reading uh, Dorian Lux. She's amazing. Um, yeah, just some of the best poetry I've read um, for a long time. Um, like really um, tough, real, real life kind of stuff. Um, um, I was listening to a, a book on audio um, a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember what it's called. Something like. Dream, dreamland um, I'll pop it up on the screen but um, in that he, the guy um, the guy in that was talking about how uh, there was this uh, kind of a scholar of um, medieval history and he was looking into these old medieval texts and how this guy kept coming across the term first sleep and second sleep and um, kind of like wondering what you know what, what's going on what, what is this kind of thing and it just kept sort of appearing in these old manuscripts and we worked out that in a sort of in the pre-industrial world sort of long before you know the invention of light electric light and stuff um, it was kind of quite normal and the, the accepted thing was to have like um, two sleeps and the first sleep would be you know like uh, evening till you know uh, around midnight and then because your body um, 
automatically does this apparently and actually our bodies now are tricked by um sort of permanent light and how like electric light has affected the the human brain and body to the extent where um it doesn't really know when it's supposed to sleep um uh anyway so like they used to have this first sleep and then they'd wake up um so you know like in the middle of the night sometimes when you do sort of just wake up and it's kind of early morning and you can't get back to sleep again well that was just kind of normal back then that was kind of just an accepted part of the evening routine and they would get up and that's when they would do you know like their prayer or their reading or their writing or you know whatever they did during that time and um and then they'd have a second sleep from like you know maybe like four or four in the morning onwards which is kind of sometimes what happens when you've got a bit of sort of amnesia or you know when you have those those nights where you can't quite sleep so this was kind of quite normal and um yeah so they worked out that this time in the middle of the the night between the first and second sleep was actually the time where the human body is the most relaxed um and the most sort of open to uh new states and to uh you know like it's the best time to read best time to be creative because like you're just at your most chilled um yeah, i just found that was really interesting that thing about the two sleeps um so like you know if you struggle sleeping with sleep um just to know that that's kind of that's a natural that's a natural human condition that we've kind of forgotten about or lost because of you know the industrial revolution and all the electricity and light and screens and stuff that we see um i'm going to try and write some poetry um over the next couple of days anyway um i mean whilst awake i know it's a <laughs> it's a you know it's a crazy idea I'm going to try, but I'm going to or try to do it in a kind of like a state as close to sleep as I can do. Where I'm just like really sort of maybe eyes closed, focused, kind of journeying, but also, you know, consciously writing. And I think if I can achieve that, then maybe that will get into my dreams. You know, who knows? We're, we're at desperate measures now because it's not working. It's not working. So why do you have to turn up unannounced in my dream like that? And what are you, just some kind of ripple in the fish splash of my thoughts? Or the river that I can't swim in? Here we are. Hi, Shani. Hi. Um, I was just, just reading um, Thomas Trans no Trans Transstroma, the half finished heaven selected poems. On that. You come to read them to me. Well, there's a little bit that I like in this one. I would like to read to you. This is related to sleeping and dreaming. Okay. And stuff, so. um, I lie about to fall. Oh, this is from the poem. Um, Nocturne. Um, I lie about to fall asleep. I see unknown images and signs sketching themselves behind the eyelids on the wall of the dark. In the slot between waking and sleep, a large letter tries to get in without quite succeeding. That's nice. 
puts the large letter. Well, I, that's it's yeah. interesting, is it isn't like it? a big yeah. A or like a letter from someone? It's like a, a letter trying to get in between the waking. And, so it's like if you're like if you imagine waking and sleep as like a yeah. letterbox, and there's a oh, large letter trying to get through. Uh, yeah, okay. between those two okay. things. Okay. So it's almost that thing of like not a big A. Not a big A. <laughs> no. It's because I was. I remember I was telling you I was, I was reading the um what's that book that I'm reading the um the flip. Mm. And in the in the book The Flip, there's like this theory that the brain is uh, like a radio. Mm. Uh, it's kind of a you know the sort of scientific metaphor, and they say that um, so like maybe the brain is like a radio. So whilst like science is just trying to sort of look at the radio and taking apart the radio and seeing how it works and not really sort of understanding why it works, maybe they it's because they're just looking at the radio and not what's being transmitted. Maybe there's something coming through, and the whole point of the flip, I guess, is that you know, there's like, there's uh, our, our our unconscious is uh, um, is uh, outside of us, like, yeah. like, yeah. So where is it coming from? Where is that? So I thought that kind of related to this. I mm. was um, getting in without quite succeeding. Anyway, my my is little that, is that the conclusion of the dream that getting in with not not quite succeeding, not quite of, succeeding. Your, of your vlog, sorry. and that seems a fitting yeah. uh, end to this vlog. Um, Did my, you lucid dream? I didn't lucid dream. No, my little booktube family. Um, we've reached the end of. Um, it's just been a week of trying, and I will carry on trying. Um, it's been an, an absolute failure. <laughs> um, with some positive. <laughs> If some positive notes, I would yeah. say. Would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think it's a difficult task you set yourself. Yeah. I wonder if anyone watching does lucid dream. Because I, yeah. I sort of slightly feel like it might be just something that you do without trying. You know, yeah. that's something that some people are able to do. I think so, yeah. But and also something ap that you can apparently, you know, yes, it's quite easy to I, train yourself to do. Right. But I feel like maybe that's training yeah. Yeah, over a week is maybe... Um, you know, I might never write poetry again, guys. Not to be melodramatic. <laughs> you do this every time. <laughs> um, ever again. Um, uh, and, that, and that's fine. And yeah, share any thoughts you have on dreams, lucid dreaming, dream writing, um, some good dreams you've had um, this last week. I think Sean wins with the um, rat in a bum bag. Um, there was also, you didn't say that there was like lots of mice in a mug as well. Mice in a mug. And I was trying to um, take the right, the, there was like m mice in a mug and I put the rat in the bum bug because I needed mm. to take it outside. Yeah. Um, I have it's a whole long story. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. then I was never got outside so I just ended up carrying around a, a yeah. rat in a bum bag and a mug of mice. Sean has recently bought a bum bag. Um, but this was a see-through, like a clear bum bag, wasn't it? So you could see the rat inside. Yeah, and then yeah. it disappeared and it was up my skirt. Right. I felt fine about all of these things. Yeah. I wouldn't feel fine in real life. Yeah. I think it's because I was, I'm, take, I'm taking over. I think it's because I was reading... Been reading Downdrift. Downdrift, hmm. which is all about, like, little mice and yeah. doing weird things. And yeah. pandas with, with um, bamboo breath. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, then. Thank you, Sean, and thank you uh, very much for, for joining me. Um, see you soon. <laughs>